Wow. Well, uh, Jalen, congrats. On Who's at that? Right here. Hey, what's up? Thank you. Congrats on the win. Uh, initial thoughts after performance like that? I am, I am uh, very happy with my performance. Um, worked really hard on that. Um, is I didn't expect any less out of myself. It seems like you were uh, you're taking advantage of his outside kicks and then ripping him to the body, uh, piecing him on, on the feet, and then right into the choke. Did you know that you would pretty much dominate the, every aspect of the game against Medic? Every interview I had, I said I would. So was that pretty much exactly how you felt like piece him up? And wherever him? the fight went, I was I was going to be successful. This might be. Uh, I don't know how to exactly phrase this, but like you've made your debut on one of the biggest cards in the history of the UFC. Can, can I? Go I ahead. debuted here. Yeah, I was three years ago. Yeah, and I fucking lost. Yeah, and I came in here and I went to avenge myself at my weight class and show everybody I belonged here. Now, on the flip side, he's had two fights in the UFC, and it's been in front of no fans inside the UFC Apex. You've obviously traveled all over the world. You fought in this venue in one of the biggest cards ever. Do you think the moment may have got to him fighting in such a massive venue in front of fans for the first time in the UFC? Yep. I seen it as soon as we stepped into the octagon. I seen that he was nervous. And uh, is any specific names you want or dates you want to come back to? Um, whoever the fuck they want to put in front of me. Uh, what, December, possibility, January, I don't, I don't care. I'm ready. As long as I'm healthy, I'm good to go. Jalen, congratulations, man. What's up, Brad? Uh, how you been? I've been good, man. Shit. Real good. A lot well, better right now. Very important question. How's Melanie doing? Uh, she's doing good. Doing good. Nice and healthy. For people who don't know, that's your pet tarantula you yeah. brought last time? One of my tarantulas, yeah. How many do you have? Um, actually, I had to cut down. I sold a lot because, you know, I ain't fought in a year, so I had to make ends meet. And uh, I sold, like, over 20 tarantulas, so I only have four right now. One of the things people noticed, you know, and they brought it up on the broadcast, you guys at lightweight were actually both taller than the middleweights <laughs> that fought, you know, a couple minutes before you guys. I mean, obviously, you keep the weight down, but how tough is it for you to get to 155? It's usually not really t It's not tough. Um, this cut was a little rough because I hadn't cut in so long. So I just, like, the last, like, pound and a half was just fucking sticking. I was like, come on, man. Like, my coach had to slap the bitch out of me and was like, let's go. Let's get this done. You didn't work all this, this hard to quit here. I was like, yep, you're right. Let's go. I think a lot of people don't know this. You're an actor now. You <laughs> starred in the film written by the MMA professional Christy Lopez. You're taking on TV star Daniel Moncada. Can you tell us a little bit about playing Waba in the film? Um, it was a great experience. That was like um, one of my, like, I guess, bigger roles, you could say. It was, it was a great time. I, I loved filming that. Um, man, I, I, it's, it's, I mean, I'm a jack of all trades. I do whatever the fuck I want. I, yeah, you gotta apply myself. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna excel at it. Have they told you when Cicatrice is gonna come out yet? Um, damn, I don't remember the date. We get it. Congrats, man. Hell yeah, thank you. Jalen, over his arm behind him. What is, what is your dream role? Man, look, I want to be Michael Myers. Okay, that's he's my favorite. Like I always wanted to play a, a role like that. Or Blade. Blade is hard. Like, let's be like, I ain't gonna do no no rusty snipe shit. But but I want to play a role like that. That'd be sick. You gonna go blonde for that? If I have to, I'll do whatever, yeah. Uh, also, what is the process for selling a tarantula and how much can you get for one? Uh, it depends on the species, it depends on how old it is, depends on the sex. So females go for more, rarer species go for more. Um, you can get anywhere from like 100 to $400 depending on the species. Some close to like $800 depending on the species, how rare it is, but yeah. And like, what do you throw that on Craigslist or like? What? Yeah, Craigslist. Yeah, Craigslist. Um, reptile shows, auctions, all that. Sh everywhere. Thanks, man. Hey, Jalen. I do not want to talk about spiders. So. Hi. Hi. <laughs> how are you? Um, I want to know how you stay motivated because you were talking about having your your you know loss here and then coming back and, and avenging it. How do you stay motivated? Um, in general, or for this camp? Oh, after a loss, how do you stay motivated? Shit, I ain't lost for three fights. I don't know. <laughs> so how did you, after that first loss, then how did you, how were you able to kind of pick back up? Um, you know, I, I got in the door how I had to, but it wasn't on, I just played the cards I was dealt, you know. It wasn't the best way to get into the octagon, get into the UFC. 
but I didn't let it hold me back and it just motivated me and put fuel to my fire to show everybody what I could do and showcase what I could do. Um, my only loss at lightweight was by a decision. I fought that fight injured and I've been healthy ever since. Every outing I've had, I've been healthy and you're seeing the results of it. Is it important for you not, not to forget those losses just as much as you remember the wins? Nobody lets me forget those losses. Every, every fight on social media, somebody's talking shit, somebody, oh, Vicente did this to you, whatever. I'm like, fuck that, that was three years ago, bro. Like, get over that shit. Like, so you never forget. You just uh, stay humble, stay grounded. Like, don't let yourself get a big head and, you know, um, the blessings come. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Jalen, congrats on the win. I was trying to gauge which tarantula was gonna show up, but <laughs> what, what was that key? to you being loose and having fun in there? Not even how you're smiling today. Well, how did you get that energy going? Um, I went through a lot of shit. I went through a hard time this last year. This last year, was, it was one of the roughest years of my life. Um, you know, just as, as a career, you know, um, the fighting path is not easy. Trying to provide for kids and keep a roof over your head is hard. Um, I didn't expect to be out for a year and Injury after injury was just just messing with my head and just messing with my mindset. It was so fucking hard, you guys. And um, man, like I was just I was happy to be back. I was happy to be able to do what I the avenue that will provide me the lifestyle that I want to that I want to live and do whatever I had to do to provide for my kids, you know. So I embraced it. Um, I just enjoyed the moment, you know, I, I went and executed, did my job, I fucking prepared my ass off for this, and it sh I sh just showcased my skills. Excellent, and happy to have you back. You mentioned something real interesting, that you saw him be nervous. What did you gauge? How did you lock in on that? I, I, got, a, I got a really good uh, sense of reading people. Like, that, I feel like that's like one of my like, like unspoken gifts. So I seen him, I watched, I watched a lot of film of him, first off. Um, I see him, I don't know if he gave Bruce Buffer the fucking, the, the knuckles to this time. I didn't see that. So I was like, okay, that's one sign. Um, he would not look at me. All, all, all fight week, he would not like stare in my eyes for too long. And I was just like, okay, like maybe that's just like, you know, like I don't do that. I don't, so maybe that was just something, but I locked eyes with him and I seen him look away and I seen him his body language has changed, and I was like, oh yeah, he's nervous. He's not used to this pressure. He's not used to the crowds. He's not used to any of this. And I was like, oh, all right, my time to attack. Uh, that's fantastic. And lastly, Pierce had that uh, kicked off the night with the rear naked choke. Second round, you topped that with the first round rear naked choke. Walk me through the finish. How did you see it in all of four minutes? Um, man, I, the, the finish came long before that. I kicked him, I kicked him in his ribs. I, I threw a left kick to his ribs and I seen him start to like wince and I was like, oh yeah, I got him. I didn't think it was hard. I was, I was, I was just felt like it was placed perfectly. And I was like, oh yeah, he's, he's fucking hurt. And then he threw that overhand left. And I was like, this motherfucker. I was like, damn. I was like, all right, let me stay sharp. Let me stay sharp. So um, I, st I started bobbing my head a little bit and then I, I knew he was hurt to the body. He started exiting towards my power side. So I switched stances and I started digging to that body. So I knew, and we trained this all camp, me and my coach, I was like, I'm gonna hit him with that double hook. Hook body, hook head, it's one of my southpaw killers. So um, I threw that and I was like, oh yeah, he's hurt. And then I was just, he curled up and I just started unleashing. Um, he, went, he went to his back, he went belly down and he started curling up and my coach called for our submission call and I was like let's get it and I threw, the, threw my arm around his neck and that was it well done sir welcome back thank you God allow me to reintroduce myself <laughs> <laughs> thank you guys